Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the 433 megahertz radio frequency transmitter and receiver modules and how to use them with Arduino. These are cheap wireless modules providing one-way communication using amplitude shift keying technique. Before using these radio frequency devices, you should always be aware of the laws and regulations regarding use of unlicensed radio frequency transmitters in your country of residence. However, these 433 megahertz modules are legal to use in many of the countries as long as they are operated at low power and they don't transmit continuously and also do not transmit sound signals. So this is the transmitter and this is the receiver module. So this is our transmitter module. It is simply a surface acoustic wave resonator tuned to operate at 433 megahertz. When the data input is high, the oscillator generates a constant radio frequency output wave at 433 megahertz. And when the data input is low, the oscillator ceases operation, resulting in the amplitude modulated wave. This is what we call the amplitude shift keying technique. So as you can see here, this mode is rather simple. Only three pins, the ground, VCC, and the data. So when you're connecting to a microcontroller like Arduino, connection is rather straightforward. This is our receiver module. This one also consists of a radio frequency tuned circuit and a couple of operational amplifiers that amplify the received signal from the transmitter and is able to decode the signal from the transmitter. It's also a simple device and as you can see also has four pins. This side is the VCC and this is the ground and these two are the signal pins but uh, these pins are internally connected. So when you are connecting to a microcontroller like Arduino, we only use one of these middle pins here as I'll be showing you later. And you also observe here, there's also room for antennas because these are wireless devices and they normally communicate at a distance. So to avoid interference or if the communication is not very good, normally you have to include an antenna. And as you can see from the transmitter, there is a label here for antenna. So this is where you connect your antenna. And for the receiver module, the antenna goes around here. Since I'm going to be using these devices for simple demonstration here, and they're going to be working close to each other, so I may not need to connect this antenna. So, but you need to connect an antenna if you're going to be using them longer distances, because the antenna help us to increase the range of transmission. The antenna is simply a simple piece of 22 or 23 gauge solid wire, and the length of the most efficient antenna is equal to the wavelength of the transmission frequency. But normally if you were to calculate the wavelength of transmission frequency for a 433 megahertz band, you're going to get a length of around 69.24 centimeters, which is quite long. Therefore, in most cases, we use a quarter or a half wave antenna. So we are going to be using like 17.3 centimeters. It's also common. For example, here you see that this one has been coiled to reduce the size. And this sometimes increases the efficiency, though it reduces the range of transmission. Let me talk about how to use these radio frequency modules with Arduino. This is the setup we are going to use. To be able to test the working of our 433 megahertz transmitter and receiver modules. We are going to connect the transmitter and receiver each on an Arduino board as shown here. Here we are going to connect the data pin for the transmitter to Arduino pin 12 and the data pin for the receiver to Arduino pin 11. We are using Arduino pin 12 and 11 because those are the ones which are being used in the Radiohead library that we are going to be using in our Arduino code sketches. So make sure when you're connecting, you don't change those pins. Then the ground and VCC will be connected to the corresponding ground and 5 volts of Arduino. And the same happens this side. From here, let's have a look at the kind of code you are going to be using and how the whole setup works. This is the code we are going to be using to test our transmitter and receiver modules using Arduino. The code sketches are rather simple. But before using this code, you need to make sure that you have uploaded the Radiohead library because it's the first library that we need to be able to use these radio frequency modules. So on the transmitter side, we first include the Radiohead Amplitude Shift Keying library and the SPI library. So the SPI library is needed for the working of the Radiohead library. Then next, we have to create an Amplitude Shift Keying object and the setup section, we simply initialize the created object in the loop section, you have to encode a message, which is a, a text string. For example, in my case, I'm going to be sending the string, hello world. This needs to be in a char data type stored in a, a character pointer called MSG. You need to take note of the length of this string and also note the number of characters that are in the string that you are using. For example, 
hello world has store characters. So you need to take note of that value. And when you're counting the characters, you also involve the spaces and any other signs or characters that are involved in your message. You can use any string that you want, but don't make it longer than 27 characters for optimal performance. In the loop section, we use the send function to be able to send the message to the receiver. And this one takes on two parameters, an array of data and the number of bytes to be sent. Then we use the wait packet send function to wait until transmission is complete. And then apply a delay of a second to give our receiver time, process everything. So in my case, I'm using one second delay, but you can use a longer delay depending on the length of the message that you are sending. On the receiver side, it's almost the same code. Just begin by including the same libraries and also creating an amplitude shift keying object. In the setup section, you initialize the created object and also set up the serial monitor because you're going to be using the serial monitor to observe the received message. Then in the loop, you create a buffer to match the size of the transmitted message. Since the message I send is 12 characters, I'll use a value of 12. So you need to adjust this depending on the message length that you have sent. Use the receive function to activate the receiver so that when a valid message is available, it copies it to the, its first parameter buffer and returns true. If the function returns true, the received message is printed on the serial monitor. So what you are going to observe on the serial monitor, you are going to be seeing the message, message received, and then the actual message that was sent from the transmitter. Let's now upload this code to our Arduino boards. You are going to upload one to the, receive, to the transmitter board and the other one to the receiver board. And then we see what you are going to observe on our serial monitor. We have now finished uploading the code to the corresponding transmitter and receiver modules. I will supply this transmitter with an external 12 volts power supply. And the receiver is connected to my computer since I need to use the serial monitor. Let me now check my receiver side code and open the serial monitor. And as you can see, it shows message received. Hello world. Uh, this means the transmitter and receiver modules are working properly. This can also help to make adjustments in our setup in case communication is not good. For example, in my case, these modules are very near. Therefore, there's no need of even using any antenna. I have the antennas here, but I'm not using them because the transmission is straightforward. This test will help you to know if there is any interference in the transmission of your radio frequency. And then you can troubleshoot to improve the communication between these devices. After checking that this that the transmitter and receiver are working properly, we can now proceed to a more practical application of these modules. So I'm going to be showing you how we can be able to send sensor data from the transmitter to the receiver. I'm going to be using DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor on the transmitter and the data is going to be displayed on the I2C LCD on the side of the receiver. The connection is rather simple. I've already shown you how to connect the transmitter module to Arduino. So the connection of the module still remains as it was. The data pin is going to be connected to Arduino pin 12 and then the data out pin for the DHT11 sensor is going to be connected to Arduino pin 8. Then they are going to be sharing the same ground and VCC from Arduino. And this side of the receiver till the receiver module is going to be connected as it was connected before to the Arduino board where the data pin is going to be connected to pin 11 and the I2C LCD should just connect the clock pin to analog pin F5 and the data pin to analog pin F4. Then they are going to be sharing the same ground and VCC. This is the setup. From here let me have a look at the kind of code that you're going to be using to have the setup work properly. This is the code for the setup. This side is the transmitter and the other side is the receiver. So the setup for this transmitter is almost the same as the one I have talked about before when you are testing our modules. But in this case, you are going to add the DHT.h library because you are going to be using the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. So you need this library to be able to read the sensor values from that sensor. So we define digital pin 8 of Arduino as the output pin for our DHT11 sensor and then define some variables for the temperature and humidity data. We also define some strings. We need to convert the temperature and humidity floats to strings and assemb assemble them in a comma delimited string that we can be able to send. Then here we are creating the amplitude shift keying object and the DHT object. Then here we shall initialize the created objects and in the loop section, we read the temperature and humidity values from the sensor and assign them to their respective floats. Then we convert both of these floats to strings, which we then construct our comma limited string here. The string is converted into a chat type named message msg, which we send and wait until it has been transmitted using the send and wait packet functions as was done before. On the receiver side, still the same libraries will be 
included but this side we are, we are going to add the wire.h and the liquid crystal i2c.h because we are going to be using a liquid crystal i2c display to be able to show our temperature and humidity readings from our sensor then we define some strings we used in the transmitter sketch for the temperature and humidity and one for the comma limited string that we will be receiving in the setup section we initialize the amplitude shift keying object and set up the lcd parameters the loop also starts off as the last receiver sketch that we saw the only difference being that our packet size is now 11 characters if a valid packet is received we convert the received data into a string this will be our command limited string arduino does not have commands to extract elements from a limited string like other programming languages so we run a small routine to do that for us it measures the string length and the position of the comma then uses that information to divide the string into two substrings we assign each of these substrings to the string variables we created to hold humidity and temperature values finally we format that output text and display it on the lcd here we shall be having our temperature and humidity values being displayed on the i2c lcd using these functions for the working of the lcd so let me now upload this code on our arduino and then we can be able to observe what happens I have now finished uploading the code to the transmitter and receiver and as you can see the data readings from the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor are being sent to the receiver here and then displayed on the I2C LCD. So in simple terms that's how our 433 megahertz radio frequency modules work. You can also try them out in a number of applications and for sending sensor data from one area to another by radio frequency. So hope you've learned something new today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to watch my other tutorials. Thanks for watching.